The only thing I haven't really done is this little indent right here for an incisal view, but that's going to come as I form my anatomy, which will be the next step. I don't think I'm going to change anything from that view. All right, your next step is to carve the anatomy. Um, I think the first thing you should um, work on is the cement enamel junction. So you're going to take a sharp instrument like a Hollenbach or a clear discoid. You're going to lay your tooth right on the picture. And what you're looking for is this intersect line where the cemento enamel junction intersects the side of the tooth on the distal and on the mesial. And where it intersects, we're going to put a mark. Yes. I'm going to do the same thing down here from a mesial view. I'm looking for where the cemento enamel junction intersects the facial side and the lingual side. I'm going to mark that on the root. With that amount of information, I'm now prepared to draw my cement enamel junction, and then I'm going to, and then I'm going to carve it. It's kind of like a dot to dot now. So there's the cement enamel junction I'm going to be carving. If you'd like to verify that position, back over here, I gave you a measurement. The cement enamel junction on the facial was 11.4 millimeters. So we can set our micrometer to 11.4 and make sure that we're where we want to be. Looks like that's pretty much right on the mark. Okay, here's how I'm going to carve my cement enamel junction. I'm going to take the tip of my knife, I'm going to carve just apical to that line, and I'm going to follow it around. So I'm doing it is carving a, a, a little step apical to the line that I just drew. Okay, here's another common mistake I see in carvings. People get so excited about that cement enamel junction, they carve a really deep one. The depth of that junction line is, on this tooth, is about oh, a tenth of a millimeter. If you don't know how much that is, set your micrometer to a tenth of a millimeter and look at it. It's not a deep line. So, I don't know how you can see that, but it's a very faint line. I'm going to come back with a cleoid discoid or a hollenbeck. I'm going to delineate it a little bit more sharply. Just following that line around. Now eventually, I don't want a sheer drop like that I'm carving here. So eventually, as I polish, that's going to be all smoothed in in the transition. But for right now, it'll be a little a tenth of a millimeter drop off. So there's our cemental enamel junction. <clears throat> I'm just going to leave that uh, dark line on there for now. The next thing I'm going to carve is the anatomy and the roots. So this one is a little bit narrower and this one is a little bit broader. Whenever you're carving something, you're always going to look for something that mimics the shape of what you want to form. So I think in this case, I'm going to use this wax spatula because it's broad and it's fat. And I can lay it sideways over here and scrape 
to get that concavity on this side I can lay it straight up and down to get a narrower concavity. So I'll lay my tooth in that same format. It appears to me from the picture that that concavity not only goes up the root but it also goes slightly into the, the crown of the tooth based on that shadowing. So I'll carry it right over the top of my CEJ and beyond just a little bit. So this is the narrow one, remember. Going right down the center of that root and up into the crown slightly. And just to smooth it so it's not quite so dramatic, I'll go sideways a couple of times. So there's my root anatomy on that on that mesial side. Now I'm going to come over to the distal side. We're going to do the same thing, but this time I'm going to lay the instrument sideways. And again, it goes up into the crown just a wee bit, but mostly on the root. So I lay it sideways and simply scrape that anatomy into the root. By the way, if you ever get to a point where you're feeling like, I just don't know where to go, it just doesn't look right, whenever you have the feeling it just doesn't look right and I don't know what to do, always the right answer is pick up your micrometer, make sure your dimensions are right. It's when your dimensions are wrong that things just don't ever seem to pan out. So, pick up your micrometer and, and take a look with the micrometer. The next anatomy we're going to place is the facial anatomy. You can see there's a, a somewhat visible indent on that side, on the distal side, and a very faint indent on the mesial side. Again, we're going to choose our instrument to the purpose, so a nice broad instrument, maybe even the back of a knife might be appropriate to carve that. You always choose the instrument based on the shape you're trying to achieve. So, I think I'll use the back of a knife. It's broad and won't, won't get anything too scraped out there. So I'm coming right down the facial side, or the facial side on the distal aspect. And I'm doing it on the same thing, but more faintly, on the mesial aspect. Facial anatomy is really important uh, and often overlooked by dentists. And the reason it's so important is because it changes the way a tooth refl reflects light. If you have a tooth that's completely round, like a piece of chiclet gum or something, it never looks real, and people can't figure out why, but it's because light hits and bounces off at very predictable angles because the surface is completely rounded. When the surface isn't quite rounded, there's uh, a wavy pattern to it, then light hits and reflect, reflects at unpredictable angles, and that's what gives the appearance of reality to a tooth. Okay, the last um, anatomy we're going to place is the lingual anatomy. And to me, the lingual anatomy on this tooth looks sort of like a scoop out, a scoop out, and a scoop out. It's almost like a, a letter W with three little areas scooped out and maybe a small fourth one scooped out. Again, I'm going to go back to a cleodiscoid or a hollenbeck. And I'm going to cut that W into the tooth. <laughs> 